Welcome to tonight's City Council meeting for Monday, December 9th, 2013. Lead us, leading us in the pledge will be Corporation Council Lonnie Dunn. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. With no other business before the meeting, Clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Gale, Mann, here. Deuster House, here. Bauer here. Holbrook here. Havermel here. Farha here. Sasson here. Ryan here. Lepper here. Mussolino here. Brink here. Heineke here. Postlog here. Thirteen present, one absent. Your Honor. Yes, I'll. I move to excuse the absent alderman. Sorry, second. We have a motion and a second to excuse the absent alderman. All those in favor? Uh, Opposed? Ordered. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Alderman Dustra. Would the minutes of the previous meeting be approved as printed? Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Ordered. Our first uh, business is the uh, report of the Quincy Preservation Commission recommending the request to rescind the local landmark des designation of 1001-1003 State Street be denied. was tabled for one week by Alderman Holslog, and we do have a speaker tonight on this. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Alderman. I move we suspend the rules and let the speaker speak. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ordered. Okay, we'll now hear from uh, Mr. Dempsey, uh, 1680 Maine. And Mr. Dempsey, if you could uh, state your name and address for the record, and you have five minutes, please. Hi, I'm Gerald Dempsey. I'm chairman of your preservation. Need to pull that mic up. Yeah, yeah, the mic, if you can. Make sure it's. Can you hear me? No. I don't think Hold it's on. on. <laughs> <laughs> Might be. Here comes somebody. They changed the battery. Yeah. I know they changed it beforehand. I know, yeah. yeah. Okay, try, try it Try it again. Did you got it on? There you go. You could blame the mic operator on this end for that one. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> Is that better? Okay. Anyway. I'm Terrell Dempsey, 1680 Maine. I'm the chairperson, or chair, I guess, of the Preservation Commission. And we met last week, and we were informed about the, uh, the motion and voting to table. And we just thought it would be uh, helpful to you if we put together a timeline that just kind of laid out what transpired um, on this particular event, this uh, certificate of appropriateness, and then this uh, resulting uh, letter where the uh, property owner requested that the, the uh, property be uh, uh, removed as a landmark. Um, I think of particular significance, and I've handed you maybe you each a copy of the timeline. Um, Mr. Fenton received a phone call from this individual in August, and it's his recollection at that time that they discussed that the property was uh, landmarked and talked in general about what needed to be done to do work uh, on the structure. Then, uh, in the middle of May, it was learned that the individual had begun work with neither a building permit nor a certificate of appropriateness. And I think it was the city um, encountered him uh, working, or encountered work being done on the property without a permit. Um, then he came in uh, at that point and began the, the, the process of applying for the application, for the uh, cert Certificate of Appropriateness application. And he provided us at that time a C of A with photographs that clearly showed these balcony brackets in place and the Certificate of Appropriateness didn't reference anything about taking the balcony down. Um, we at the request of uh, Mayor Moore, scheduled a special meeting to accommodate the property owner so that we could very quickly address his needs. Um, I think it's important to note that we approved the certificate of appropriateness to proceed with the windows. And uh, we thought that uh, everything was fine. Then the next thing we know, we find out 
that he's gone beyond the certificate of appropriateness and torn off the balcony. He had been provided with a copy of the ordinance landmarking the structure and we went over it with him and explained what the landmark features of the building were at the meeting when we issued the C of A. Then uh, subs the, 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 the subsequent steps are laid out there for you in the, in the paper. But I think the feeling of the um, Preservation Commission was this was a rather egregious violation. Um, he turned around in, in uh, July and uh, uh, sent a letter asking that the landmark status be rescinded. Um, our feeling is, and obviously this is a voluntary process where people come forward um, there are hearings, the property owner consents, and then the uh, landmark status becomes like a lien or an easement and passes with the property from owner to owner. In this case, he had actual knowledge. Um, if, noth if nothing else, it's undisputed that he had actual knowledge as of the May uh, 28th meeting that we, that we had with him and the actions result regarding this balcony were after that. And um, we just think it's very important to the integrity of the program in fairness to all the people who comply with the landmarking laws that uh, this not degenerate into a program where it's like the placking program that Quincy Preserves runs where we just acknowledge that something's a nice structure, the intent of the landmark is to give some protection to the property. So we're asking you please to uh, uh, not follow our recommendation and, and not consider de-landmarking the property. Are there any questions? Yes. Alderwoman Lepper. Yes, ma'am. In your recollection, when was the first time that this landowner was notified that this was a um, that his building had that was a part of the landmark would be the first time he saw the face of the building with the big plaque <coughs> on it that says Quincy Landmark. <laughs> Did he understand time. though what that meant? I mean, because in your commentate when you're talking to him, it didn't seem mm -hmm. like he was quite aware of what he was able to do and not able to do with that landmark status. Is that correct or not? Um, well, he definitely understood after that May 28th meeting. There's no question about that, and these actions did tend transpire after that. And uh, Alderman Lepper, Alderwoman Lepper, um, uh, I am an attorney, and uh, you know we have actual knowledge, we have constructive knowledge. Um, he had every type of knowledge you can have <laughs> under the law. He had actual knowledge, constructive knowledge. He had actual knowledge from the sign. And he sat down and had all this explained in great detail. We actually sat with him on May 28th for a considerable amount of time at a special meeting where we did nothing other than address his certificate of appropriateness. And he understood what needed to be done then and yet elected to ignore the law, ignore the process, and proceed. Alderman Brink. Oh, Mr. Dempsey. Yes, sir. Um, Alderman Havermill last week brought up the issue of whether the landmark status was recorded on the deed. Is that part of the procedure when you uh, identify these as designate these as landmark status? They're supposed to be recorded. And this one was not, is that correct? I don't know. It's my understanding that it was not, has been. Has it been since then? Yes. And then I don't know when it was recorded in relation to when he took the balcony down. I just don't know that. And this is a voluntary program, and the owner, so the owner actually seeks out the Preservation Commission's recommendation for a landmark status? The voluntary part, in fact, the intent of the law is to protect the property from subsequent owner's violations. The voluntary part is we're very careful when a piece of property is landmarked that the owner consents. And then it becomes like an easement running with the property. It's like I don't, when I bought my house at 18th and Main, I did not renegotiate with the utilities as to whether or not they still had easement across my property. I did not renegotiate with the city. I can't put a fence up across the sidewalk. 
um, you still have that easement across my property because you take it subject to the easement. He had knowledge. Okay. And so when you try to determine if you're going to purchase a property, um, wouldn't the official document be the deed? Well, that's, that's how whether you Whether there's a sign on the front of the building or not, I mean, right. wouldn't you go to the deed to determine whether it's landmark status or not? Right. And in this case, if you went to the deed, then there was not designated as landmark status. Right. Is that correct? His actions were after the May 28th meeting. He I understand that. He absolutely knew it was landmarked at that point. Thank you. Any additional questions? Alderman Ryan. Part of the uh, <clears throat> landmark was the balcony. Is it your intention to reinstall that balcony on this property? I, we're not in charge of enforcement. I honestly don't know what the enforcement, I, they, I think you need to ask the city attorney. I think that's the appropriate thing to do. The, the, uh, the balcony should be re reinstalled if it's available. Uh, if but, not, but I mean, short of that, you've lost uh, a, a big element in, in the violation. One here. element. Right. And then the doors. He's in, there, he's in, there's no question he's in violation. And the doors are now windows. No, they've there have been a certificate of appropriateness that is has been a. It's okay to get done. rid of those doors and make windows there, right? I beg your pardon, sir. On the second floor. Not without a certificate of appropriateness. <clears throat> what's happened I mean you can see it in the pictures <clears throat> and I'm just wondering if, if the intention is to somehow get that property restored to the way it was whenever it got landmark status if that's what's going to happen who's going to pay for that that's my question so can somebody answer that what's the question Alderman uh, well, obviously, if, that, if that's to be done, it would be incumbent upon the property. Owner. I was going to say, yeah. it would, if, if we continue on with enforcement action, it would be incumbent upon the land or the property owner to do that himself, to come into, compli to come into <coughs> compliance with the ordinance. Yeah, okay. I mean, you but, understand but, why. You know, I get what you get, but is it appropriate for us to talk, to discuss this while we're suspended? No, we ought okay. to. Uh, any, any additional qu questions? I'll entertain a motion to resume sitting as city council. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Thank Chairman. You, yes, Alderman Havermill. Uh, Mike, uh, Alderman Ryan, to address your 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 comment, um, it would, again, it would. what happened here is when they redid the front of the building where you see the, some of the windows that were changed, yes. there was a request to do that, and the Preservation Commission met and approved that change, that it did not violate the landmark status. The balcony is a, a completely separate issue and was a land uh, uh, a point of landmarking, an architecturally significant uh, component of, of the building. So there, if we find the, if we don't rescind this or if we decide to uh, enforce this, it would be incumbent upon them to put that back up somehow. Any additional questions? Mr. Alderman. Chairman. Yes, Alderman. I'd like to make a recommendation to override the Preservation Commission and remove the properties from the landmark status. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Opposed? No. Uh, so ordered. Motion carries. <clears throat> Next is um, report of the Traffic Commission. The Traffic Commission recommends that a three-way stop be implemented at the intersection of 9th and Spring Streets. There is a large number of pedestrian crossing at this intersection, increasing vehicle traffic. Your Honor. Yes, Alderman. I move that we concur with the Traffic Commission. Second. We have an ordinance. And an ordinance drafted. We have a motion and a second to uh, concur with the Traffic Commission and, and uh, draft an ordinance. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So ordered. The next one is... The Traffic Commission recommends that yield signs be placed at the intersection of Josephine Drive and Freeze Drive with Josephine Drive yielding to Freeze Drive. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Alderman. I move we concur with the report of the, planning, or the Traffic Commission and uh, have an ordinance drafted. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Opposed? Order. <clears throat> and uh, 
we have uh, that was tabled last week uh, the fire and police commissioners making the reappointment of police chief Rob Copley it's tabled by Alderman Ryan we can have uh, uh, police and fire uh, commission chairman Charlie Doan come up please I want to bring the commissioners up here so you'll know who they are. And uh, thank you, uh, Mayor, for and all of them for having guests here tonight. I appreciate it very much. Uh, this is uh, David Ayers, who is the oldest member in our department. He's been uh, chairman of it. <laughs> They're getting at me. I'm 88. And Dick wins here. We all three have served as chairman here, and between us, we got more than 50 years of service in this type of work. Can you make sure you speak into the mic? Please? So, okay. Mr. Mr. Doan. Keep, the mic. Look, Keep in the mic. Down there. there you go. Thank you. Yeah, I want to apologize for my dress tonight because everybody has asked me what my wife hit me with. But I just got out of surgery. They removed the cancer on my face. And I've got just a little bit of uh, paralyzing in my mouth and lips here. So if I slur something, well, I tell them to repeat it again. My purpose to, to get to you tonight try to bring up to you some of the things that how we do our work and what is legal and what is by ordinance the far uh, and police commissions were created to stop political hiring a far and police department people uh, creating an independence non-political body in the commissioners today excuse me Corporal Tunnel. <coughs> and the commissioners, uh, they hire, we hire only people today that are qualified and earned by the appointment through a testing process. And anybody can test with us today. Men, women, anybody can test with us today because it's available to them. Uh, Chief Copley has been with the Quincy Fire Department for 26 years. And he has helped and watched the Quincy Police Department uh, get, kill that, kill that, get that out there. <laughs> he's seen, seen and helped the, the Quincy Police Department to grow from a good union into one of the nation's best organs. Now, the chiefs that come here and test here, they run into nothing throughout the state of Illinois that exists here in Quincy, in our fire department and in our police department. And we're very proud of it because uh, I want to test just a little bit about uh, Joe Hennings, what a great thing he, that young man has done. He's a very unusual person. We hooked on his uh, five-year term that uh, the mayor and uh, the HR people and his salary for three years, that you people know all about that, an education. That man went out and did it all. He traded work worked with the uh, John Woods College, and uh, he saved this city many, many dollars to accomplish what they've done out there, you know. He also has earned the chief uh, fire officer. This is appointed uh, by the state fire marshal uh, over there. And I'm going to skip some things down here because what I do now, I'm going to talk from the, what is available in the ordinance and come back and ask questions and maybe two or three other. The um, item point 1003, appointment of the the mayor shall appoint by and with advice and consent of the <coughs> city council. The, yes, under appointments. There is hereby created an office of the chief of police. We had the chief in the fire department. And back in the early days, they were city policemen. Uh, 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 they were city marshals or superintendent of the police on that. The chiefs shall be appointed by the board of fire and police commissioners. The term of office shall not exceed five years. That helps uh, the alderman the other night was wondering about the five-year term line. And this, uh, the, the term of office not to exceed five years. Under the appointment and promotion period, the Board of Farm Police Commissioners shall appoint all officers and members of the Farm and Police Department and the municipal, including the Chief of Police and the Chief of the Fire Department. 
I'm going to skip over a page here or two and get in again to the what is our policy and how we do it. The sole authority is issued certificates by the appointment shall be vested in the Board of Fire and Police Commissioners and all certificates of appointment issued by any officer or member of the Fire and Police Department. The municipal shall be signed by the chairman and the secretary respectively of the Board of Fire and Police Commissioners of such medical. Upon appointment of such officers, the members of the Fire Department and the Police Department each municipal by action of the fire and police department. We gave the board notice here that we had it extended the five-year term to our two existing chiefs, and they are now in that period on the five-year period. There's uh, uh, Chief Copley is the only police officer that's even served a five-year period in a job. Uh, Gruber didn't, Wilson didn't, and. Uh, the last officer that we had here. Uh, and uh, I don't know exactly when all this was put into place, but uh, apparently it was uh, before or after Chief Wells's time. Here. Now, if you can still hear my voice, why we'll take questions and we'll try to answer any questions. If you have in mind, ask us to it. And I apologize for my having difficulty of reading here because I'm just partly paralyzed on this side of my mouth, you know, so. And, uh, Alderman Ryan, do you have anything you'd like to add? Yes, I would. <clears throat> um, so the, um, mayor's elected for four years, and you have the option of extending these terms from one to five years. Why did you choose five years? Well, you Alderman's did that. Oh, we did? You and the mayor did that. You put it in your ordinance. Yeah. It's in the and so it's nothing, nothing that we've done now. No, no, no. You have the option of one to five. Yeah. You could have picked any number in between there. You picked five. Why didn't you pick three or four? What's the criteria know. that you used and the thought process that you went through? Well, these, these two individuals. I just don't know. That's the reason I'm asking. Yeah. Well, these two individuals we extended would deserve ten years. We're lucky to have them. Now, the other good point about this is, if you're going to go outside, which we did when Chief Gruber came to town, you have to give them some time or you won't get the people to come in. And the chiefs all across the state on both fire department and police department tell us what is going on in Quincy that doesn't exist in other parts of the country. Now, no person has uh, served a five-year straight period but our current Chief Copley. He's the only person in it. Now, just because the commissioners promote you and extend your term for five years, that don't mean you're going to last because you have to live up to the code if you make mistakes and, and violate the rules because we're going to support what the mayor and alderman has put together for us to work with. And it's what we do together makes things work and makes things happen. And we're proud to have the mayor and alderman on our team because you're, you, this body here has financed our police and fire department very well over the years here in the system. They're very good. They're in very good shape, so you've been very nice to it. Go ahead. Alderman Ryan, any additional questions? Jeez, I I Alderman Brink. Uh, yes, Your Honor, thank you. Um, Mr. Doan, the code is pretty clear that if the Police and Fire Commission gives the City Council notice within four months, then actually it's, it's, just, it's the Police and Fire Commission decision only. If they don't give the Council notice, then within 30 days of that term, then the council can decide to reappoint or not to reappoint. So by you giving this notice, it's your decision, your decision only, the way I see it. Um, but the code is also very clear when it says annual evaluations. The commission shall conduct annual evaluations of the fire and police chiefs. Have they been done? Yes. The, uh, here is the chief of police. Well, he went in five years and answer every question we have on there. If you want to know the categories, we'd be glad to have you there. And also the, uh, the chief of the fire chief, here's his, and everything that we ask for is in there and over and above. Uh, uh, Joe Hennings is one sharp individual. I'm not questioning the, the chiefs. I'm, I'm questioning the procedure. So has the five, every year has a new no, evaluation been done? Go ahead. Well, like with the, the chief of police, <coughs> the ongoing legislation at the state level 
that they enforce, the laws that they enforce, a guy has to have at least five years to, to be coherent in what's going on. It changes daily. And we've got a great investment in these, well, as you know, and we've got a great investment in these people. And uh, if they don't perform, the board will handle it seriously. We take it very seriously. Uh, I, I don't know what's broken here. So I don't know what we can fix. Well, there's nothing broken. We have a, a great organization on this thing. Did, the, and are the, you, are you the question that I have, the question I have, the code clearly states the commission shall conduct annual evaluations of the fire and police chiefs done. annually. And they have been done every year. Oh, yeah. Okay. Then the last part of the code says the commission shall report the results of such evaluations to the respective chiefs and the city council. Well, we, we are required to advise you. Sure. You mean, you, are you referring to wanting copies or something of it? I just wanted to make sure they were done. That's the only thing I was trying to, that, that yeah. was my goal. If you, can, if you assure me they have been done annually, I'm fine. If I what? If yeah. you assure me they have been done on an annual basis, I am yes. fine. Yeah. Are there any other questions? Now, to, to get back to what you and appreciate what you're asking about there. Here, here are some of the things that, under the evaluation, it comes up. Uh, leadership, planning, organizational and administrative ability, judgment and problem-solving abilities, oral and written communication, skills, attitude, skills of developing <laughs> of subordinate employees, relationship with subordinate employees, administration and the public, as well other matters as which the, the Board of Foreign Pressure I see it would be great for an elevator of the commission. The commission shall report all results of such evaluation respectfully to the chiefs and the council and the mayor on that. Uh, these in this particular just, group, Charlie, let me let me just go and I'll Mr. verify. Dome, I think that's that's okay. I, I, I don't huh? I don't yeah. I don't think there are enough. Anybody else yeah. has any questions? Well, we're prepared to show you what they. We, we what appreciate. We, you, thank you. Okay. Is there anything else? I, I don't have a comment. I don't have a question for the commission. I, I just have a, a comment. I, I don't want to speak for other aldermen. I, I, and the reason I voted to table, first off, we cannot discuss a motion to table. Uh, so there was, there was no discussion last week. Secondly, I don't think anybody up here is necessarily questioning the abilities of the chiefs involved. Uh, and I don't want to speak for any other aldermen. If I'm out of line, please let me know. But uh, I think we were just kind of concerned. I know I've been on for 10 years and I haven't uh, ever been presented with a evaluation of the uh, of, of any chief so uh, I think it was more of a question of the process I don't think there's anything necessarily broken I think it's better maybe better communication between the Commission and the council is probably what we're what we're asking for so uh, again I, I uh, again I think the chiefs do an outstanding job and uh, uh, hope the public understands this was not a question of our chiefs. In my mind, it was a question of, uh, of procedure. And uh, I hope everybody understands that clearly. Alderman Brink. Yes, I just want to reiterate what Alderman Havermill said. I mean, I think before we as a council, you know, agree to a five-year appointment, our, the, we, it's our responsibility to make sure the procedures have been followed. And that's the only thing I was trying to accomplish. Yeah. I believe that's one well, thing Mr. Uh, Ryan was trying to accomplish. Uh, keep this in mind. The mayor and the alderman, you have a ch an opportunity to change anything you don't like on it. If you want to tell us we have to go more than three years, fine. If you tell us we have to go one year, fine. But it would interfere if you have to go outside the city and get someone just in case you didn't have someone qualified. Now, we've got a good backup now. We've got good people that's uh, well qualified to step in there if we need them. But we want to work, uh, with, and we appreciate what you aldermen and the mayors do for us, you know. So... Anything else? Well, again, thank you very much. Now, I thank you, Mr. Dome. For my, uh, I'll entertain a I'll entertain a motion to receive and file the report of the okay. uh, Fire Police Commission on the reappointment of Chief Copley. Second. We have a motion, a second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So ordered. And then we also have the uh, reappointment of uh, Fire Chief Joe Henning that was tabled. Second. We have a motion, a second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So ordered. 
Our first resolution is recommend approval of the low bid of Centus Corporation in the amount of $8,137.04 for a two-year contract beginning 12-1-13 and ending 11-30-15 for uniforms provided by the union. Contract was tabled for one week. A motion from Alderman Farha. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Alderman Farha. Uh, <laughs> it's my unfortunate responsibility <laughs> report. We still haven't reached a decision, so I would move that we lay that on the table and refer it back to the Finance Committee. Sorry. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Ordered? Okay. To finance. <clears throat> Next resolution is Utilities Director and Purchasing Interim Director recommending low bid for bids for a one-year contract beginning January 1, 2014 and ending December 31, 2014 for various chemicals used by the water treatment plant from various companies. Your Honor. Yes, Alderman. I move for adoption of the resolution. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt the resolution. Are there any questions? Hearing none, clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Gill. Mand. Aye. Deuster House. Aye. Bauer. Aye. Holbrook. Aye. Havermel. Aye. Farha. Aye. Sasson. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Lepper. Aye. Masolino. Aye. Brink. Aye. Heineke. Aye. Oslog. Aye. 13 ayes, 1 absent. The resolution is adopted. Our next resolution is adopting the emergency operations plan. Mr. Chairman, I move to adopt the resolution. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt the resolution. Are there any questions? Mr. Chairman. Yes, Alderman. Who's the, what's the driving force behind this plan? Do we not have one in place yeah, right that now? That would be me. We don't have one in place right now. And uh, one of the things, uh, first week when I came into office, I met with the uh, public safety officials and John Simon of the uh, uh, emergency uh, management and uh, asked about a plan. We don't have a, uh, a playbook, so to speak. And so what this does is it, it uh, gives us a uh, emergency operations plan, and then on the back, they what they call annexes, where then we can uh, have in our uh, adopted emergency operations plan what to do in case of a snowstorm, a tornado, uh, flood, and, it, and yeah, and it gives future administrations not only uh, you know when to act, who to call. Uh, who can mobilize, uh, you know, certain like the Red Cross and mm -hmm. s things like that. So basically the, the goal of this is uh, over the next three years is to have the emergency operation and uh, plan and the annex is all filled out. That way if for some unfortunate reason there would be a new administration in four years, uh, <laughs> if the mayor took the oath of office on day one and there was a flood, he would have a playbook uh, to go from and know what to do. Okay. I just wanted to, just wanted to make sure where it was coming from. Thanks. Yes. We have a motion. Was there a second? Yes. We have a motion and a second. Are there any other questions? Uh, hearing none, clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Gill. <coughs> Mand. Aye. Deuster House. Aye. Bauer. Aye. Holbrook. Aye. Havermo. Aye. Farha. Aye. Sasson. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Lepper. Aye. Mussolino. Aye. Brink. Aye. Heineke. Aye. Oslock. Aye. 13 ayes, 1 absent. The resolution is adopted. Thank you. An ordinance up for adoption, and this is um, a zoning change at 1030 North 5th. Your Honor. Yes, Alderman. I move to adopt the ordinance. Second. <coughs> we have a motion and a second. Are there any questions? Hearing none, clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Gill. Mand. Aye. Deuster House. Aye. Bauer. Aye. Holbrook. Aye. Havermo. Aye. Farha. Aye. Sasson. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Lepper. Aye. Mussolino. Aye. Brink. Aye. Heineke. Aye. Hoslog. Aye. 13 ayes, 1 absent. The ordinance is adopted. Another ordinance up for adoption, which is also um, a code change at 2415 Larch Road. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Alderman. I move for the adoption of the ordinance. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt the ordinance. Are there any questions? Hearing none, clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Gill. Mand. Aye. Deuster House. Aye. Bauer. Aye. Holbrook. Aye. Havermo? Aye. Farha? Aye. Sasson? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Lepper? Aye. Mussolino? Aye. Brink? Aye. Heineke? Aye. Hoslog? Aye. 13 ayes, 1 absent. The ordinance is adopted. Next ordinance is up for first presentation, and this is amending uh, Chapter 19, Article 5, Peddlers. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Alderman. 
I move for the adoption of the, of the ordinance. No, it's oh, that's it's our first, first reading. First reading. I'm sorry. I move to be read first time by title. Second. We have a motion and a second to read the ordinance first time by title. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The clerk will now read the ordinance first time by title only. An ordinance amending Article 6 Peddlers of Chapter 19 Business Licenses of the Municipal Code of the City of Quincy of 1980. Here is the first reading by title only. Your Honor. Yes, Alderman. Can I ask one quick question on that? You bet. I did not notice when I was reading this over if there was a cost involved or not. Would somebody like to iterate if this is free of charge or if there is an extra cost? Chief Gold, we can answer that. Thank you. It would be the same as any other peddler's license, and it's a five-dollar fee. Chief, we discussed that in committee that you know of not having it, it was just easier just to keep it at the five dollars. It was a very minimal amount. Right, and our thought when we put this together was rather than create a new ordinance to cover the selling and giving away of uh, animals on public property, that just incorporate into peddling since it is uh, similar activity. And uh, rather than change the ordinance, uh, just uh, incorporate the fee with, with this as well. Is this going to be hard for us to enforce? Uh, it would be like any other peddling uh, situation. Uh, if we get complaints that they, that they feel someone is peddling without a license, we investigate it. Uh, if an officer sees someone, they, they have the ability to stop and ask uh, to see their license. Thank I, you. I really don't see it as an enforcing issue, enforcement okay. issue. Are there any additional questions? Thank you, Chief. Just one comment, though, yes. Chief. You might just, you got the next two. You might, there might be questions <laughs> if you want to. Save me some staff. Yeah. Staff, thanks, Chief. All right, the next one is also up for first reading, and this is amending letter definition in Article 1 of Chapter 21. Move this be read first time by title only. Second. We have a motion and a second to read the ordinance first time by title. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Clerk will now read the ordinance first time by title only. An ordinance admitting Article 1, Nuisance and Abatement of Nuisance of Chapter 21, Health Regulations of the Municipal Code of the City of Quincy of 1980. Here ends the first reading by title only. Any questions? Uh, Alderman Wright. would like to ask the Chief to explain the, the significance of this particular amendment. Effective uh, January 1st, the State uh, Litter Control Act uh, has language added to it, specifically uh, naming cigarette butts as litter. Uh, and this just um, puts mirrors of state law in our ordinance and would give us the ability to write the ordinance, at, which has a lower fine than the state law, so that we would have more of a gradual approach. If someone uh, continues to be a problem, we can always write the state law with the higher fines, but this would give us the officer's ability to use the city ordinance. We did add the language uh, of filtered cigar butts. There, uh, there's not a lot of those out there, but they do exist. Uh, that is not in the state law. We thought that the filter being the issue, that that should be added in. Any additional questions? No. Thank you. <coughs> And then we have the last ordinance. It's also up for first reading, and this uh, amends Article 3, CATS of Chapter 22. It's CAT fee. Um, move this. It'll be read first time by title only. Sorry. We have a motion and a second to read this ordinance first time by title. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Clerk will now read the ordinance first time by title only. An ordinance amending Article Code 3, CATS of Chapter 22, Animals of the Municipal Code of the City of Quincy of 1980. Here is the first reading by title only. Are there any questions? Alderman Brink. Yeah, Chief, is there an enforcement issue with this? <laughs> this could have, yeah, an enforcement issue attached to it. It would be done uh, similar to the way the county does with the uh, dog tags as far as how they're, they're issued and uh, paid for. Um, we, um, we already issue the tags, so that's not going to be an issue. It's more of uh, th th all this really changes is paying for the tags. Uh, the issues with the tags already exist for cats. Uh, this enforcement issue might be whether uh, someone doesn't opts not to do this because there is a fee. So how do you determine whose cat it is? Uh, if they have the tags on it, you determine it by the tag. If they don't, <laughs> obviously, if obviously. They don't then um, it's up for somebody to claim, claim the cat. I was always told that uh, if you feed it, you own it. That's true. That is true. 
Yeah. Um, if if a uh, you have a stray cat problem and someone is feeding them at their their residence or anywhere, they are now the owner of that cat. Thank you. Any additional questions? Okay. Thank you, Chief. I have the report of the finance. <clears throat> Transfers be $174,500. <coughs> Expenditures be $804,769.54. And payroll to be $152,593.88. Tuesday House, Firehouse, Sass, and Haver Mill, um, Host Log Committee. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Alderman. I move the report we received and the vouchers issued for the various amounts. Second. We have a motion and a second. Clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Gale. Mand. Aye. Two Strauss? Aye. Bauer? Aye. Holbrook? Aye. Havermo? Aye. Farha? Aye. Sasson? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Lepper? Aye. Mussolino? Aye. Brink? Aye. Heineke? Aye. Hoslog? Aye. Thirteen ayes, one absent. So ordered. And our next uh, item on the agenda is uh, request to speak under suspended rules on the garbage issue. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Alderman. I move the rules be suspended and the uh, requesting speaker be allowed to speak. Sorry. We have a motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Uh, so ordered. Uh, we will now hear from uh, Ms. Klein. And a guest. <laughs> I just want a speaker, though. And if you could state your name and address uh, for the record. Yes, and I would like to make that correction. I'm, I go by Mary Ann Klein, not Mary Klein. Oh, okay. But thank you. You bet. And I live at 2100 Aldo Boulevard. I'd like to, uh, Mayor Moore and members of the council, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to speak this evening. Uh, as president of the League of Women Voters of uh, Adams County, I'm here to read a statement, actually, which reflects the League's thoughts on proposals to change the way in which garbage and recycling items are collected in Quincy. This subject is of keen interest to our League, which has long been involved in efforts to address issues which affect the quality of life in Quincy. Some examples from our history. In 1953, a League study of local water and waste systems led to eventual modernization of the sewer system. In 1954, League studied the problem of crowding in some of our public schools and endorsed the building of a new senior high in Quincy. In 1966, the League study led to the hiring of a full-time director of parks and recreation. In 1995, the League was represented on the mayor's task force on solid waste management. The work of this task force led to a ban on leaf burning in the city of Quincy and improvements in the recycling system. In 2007, the League spearheaded efforts to create the Adams County Green Coalition, which had as its goal to explore, develop, and support green initiatives in Adams County. The proposed changes are of keen interest to us because of the League's efforts to encourage recycling, to encourage Quincy to become more and more of a green community. Second, the League promotes education and understanding among citizens as a necessary background to inform decision making. We are concerned because the scope and implications of the proposed changes are not clear to the citizenry. It's our sense that many, many do not feel that they have a grasp yet of the implications and effects on them of the proposed changes. We believe it is unwise to proceed with a major programmatic change which people do not sufficiently understand and are therefore more likely to resent if they feel it has been inflicted on them. Several members of our league attended the public sessions at St. Peter Catholic Church in the Quincy Public Library last week. Strong opinions were voiced and many, many facets of the issue were addressed. Effects on citizens, individuals, families, those on fixed incomes, residents of multi-units. Effects on efforts to encourage recycling the need to repair and replace city equipment, the effects of outsourcing an essential service, the value of the city retaining control of an essential service, budgetary implications, an unenforced city ordinance, the absence of a franchise fee, raising the price of garbage stickers, and many more. It was apparent to many who attended these sessions that the proposal to privatize raises so many questions that a wide-ranging study needs to be done. 
We submit that this is an issue which requires more opportunities for our fellow citizens to educate themselves about the implications of such a proposal. The League's approach <clears throat> is to study thoroughly before deciding on the positions it will advocate for. To return to a moment in our history, the League studied the effect of leaf burning on air quality in Quincy and took steps to educate our community about the detrimental health effects of leaf burning. Our League collaborated with other organizations, including representatives from the medical community, to raise awareness. The League was then represented on the Mayor's Task Force on Solid Waste Management. An ordinance banning leaf burning resulted and the improvements in the recycling program occurred. The League helped to educate our community about the benefits of recycling. The current sticker program was designed to encourage citizens to recycle for its obvious ecological benefits, but also because it would extend the life of the landfill, saving money in the long run while providing some funds to the city. The sticker program was not conceived as a program which would pay for recycling. An event even more recent in our history, the League led efforts to collaborate with other entities to create the Adams County Green Coalition, including the City Planning Commission, the U of I Extension Office, and other county groups. The League of Women Voters of Adams County respectfully suggest to the Council that any proposal that would involve major changes in how we deal with garbage and recycling in Quincy be tabled until a more thorough community-wide study be conducted. When the Council decides to revisit the change proposed the League of Women Voters requests that be a, it be a part of an effort, perhaps a task force, to study various approaches to the collection of garbage and recycled items in Quincy. I'm with, this evening I'm with Mary Ann Barnard, who many of you know, who is active in the uh, Green Coalition and has the chair of the Ecology Committee for the League of Women Voters. We have some copies of um, my statement, which we'd like to share with you. And I also would like to, um, in addition, is a sheet which extracts bullet points for you know, your uh, consideration. Before those are handed out, are there any questions? Thank you. Thank you for your time. Okay, really Again, thank it. you very much for the time. You bet. Thank you so much. I'll entertain a motion to resume sitting as city council. So moved. We have a motion and a second to resume city as city council. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are now sitting as city council. Any additional business, Madam Clerk? No. Alderwoman Mann, any new business? No new business, Your Honor. Alderman Dustrath? No new business, Your Honor. Alderman Bauer? No, sir. Alderman Holbrook? None, sir. Alderman Havermail. No, thank you. I uh, just want to thank all those who came out to the two forums. We had, I think, over 300 people. Uh, I think maybe the school board will be a little jealous of our turnout. So, um, But uh, it was a very good, uh, very good discussion. I appreciate all those who came out. I want to remind anybody that... Uh, as a contractor in the city of Quincy, we have a contractor's hour this Thursday morning, bright and early at 6.30 in the morning. Uh, we'll have members of our planning and review committee there for you to uh, tell us how the process is working for you, not working for you, any ideas what we can do to speed up the process. Uh, so if you know of a contractor or are a contractor, uh, we would appreciate you uh, coming at 6.30 in the morning. That's Thursday morning. Uh, Alderman Farha. Just I want to remind all the aldermen and the public that we will be meeting at 445 Wednesday. I'm not sure if we'll meet in the chambers or in the caucus room to discuss the um, latest actuarial study on the police and fire funding and the tax levy, which we'll have a hearing on on the 16th. That's it. Alderman. Yes, Mayor, uh, I had a question on when is the last day of the, end of the 20th of the leaf pickup? Oh. Um, Marty? You're Yard waste. Yard waste is the last day of the 20th. 20th. Okay. That's correct. I thought well, I just want to remind yes. the folks that the 20th was the 20th. I yes. didn't know the exact date, but that's all. Thank you. Alderman Ryan. No additional business. Alderman Lever. No, thank you, Your Honor. Alderman Musselino. Um, yeah, Your Honor, I just wanted to um, thank the League of Women Voters for their input tonight. Um, I also wanted to thank the citizens that have either emailed me or um, called me by phone uh, to discuss the situation with the garbage and recycling. 
Um, I encourage anyone that hasn't gotten a hold of me that has an opinion to please contact me. I'm open for suggestion, and that's how I base my decision. So, um, but thank you for coming in and giving your input tonight. And that's all. Now, Alderman Brink. Uh, no, thank you, Your Honor. Alderman Heineke. No, sir. Alderman Holschalk. No new business. Move we adjourn. We have a motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned.